In this video, I'm gonna show you how to properly snake your toilet. All right, so before we get started, it's a good idea to make sure you got some sort of gloves. I always use just leather gloves, uh, gardening gloves, you could say. Um, they kind of protect me against this, the coil here as well as here. I'm not afraid to touch this. It's, sometimes this is a little sharp, so if you got thin rubber gloves, uh, that might just cut the rubber gloves. So it's nice to have a thick pair of gloves. All right, let's jump into this. Let me show you guys how this is done. All right, so these snakes, uh, they're pretty easy to operate. There are a few things that you wanna keep in mind and I'm gonna show you guys a few little tips and tricks that I've learned along the ways uh, to kind of save your toilet from getting damaged from the snake uh, because this part of the, the snake here, the head and also the snake part, it can mark up your toilet. So you wanna to try to avoid that as much as you can. Uh, there's a few little tricks on how to operate this little snake here, even though it looks like a pretty easy uh, piece of equipment. This one here is actually a general. I thought it was a rigid. This is a general snake. Um, <clears throat> this is probably one of the more pricier snakes that you can buy. Um, but yeah, all these are pretty close to the same. This one can extend from three feet to six feet. So as you can see here, we've got the head of the snake. We've got the snake. This part here, like I said, all these snakes are a little bit different, but I'm going to show you guys this one here. This part just clicks off just like that. Okay. Now, what you want to do from here, you don't want to just push this down into your toilet because this will end up marking your toilet. Uh, you'll get all these little marks that you, you can't get them off porcelain. Now, you want to make sure you always have a bucket, have your gloves on, okay? Be careful, be mindful of what you touch, uh, especially if it's a reused snake like this one that I have here. I'm always, if I, once I'm done snaking, I always go home and I'll wash everything. I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep all my dirty stuff separate. So anyways, what I'll do is I'll take the snake and I'll put the snake right into the bucket here. And this is why it's nice to have the bucket. And this part here has another section here where I can slide this snake up. So what I'll do is I'll slide this snake up just like this, all the way up, just so that the end is just inside, just like that, right? So now what we do is we take this end of the snake here and we push it into the toilet. Okay, but when we push it into it, we're very, very careful, okay, that we just slide it right into the back just like that. Now, what I like to do when I'm doing this is I don't like to have it straight up and down because it gives it a chance for the snake to come back, okay? So what I'll do is I'll push it in and I'll just turn it, like lean it back towards me just a little bit, just like this, okay? And then from here, what I'm doing is I'm pu I'll push it down. <clears throat> so what I'll do from here is I'll just slide this part down until it'll stop. So now what I'm doing is I'm either gonna hit a clog or I'm hitting the S-trap of the toilet itself, okay? So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up and down until I hit, until I stop. I'll grab the handle on the top here and I'm gonna push down and I'm gonna turn at the same time as I'm going through the toilet. When I'm doing this, I don't wanna force it too much. I wanna allow the snake to kind of do the work. So I'm not going to reefing and pushing down as hard as I can to get this clog out, okay? You don't wanna end up cracking or breaking your toilet and then you're left with a huge mess. So I'll push down. Now, as I'm turning, I'm applying a decent amount of pressure down. If you hit the clog, and it stops and you can't go anymore and it starts binding up on you and wants to come back, let it go. It's gonna rip back, let it go. Go back a little bit and then just start trying to, once you find that clog, turn, turn, it's gonna bind. Then just put a little pressure on it, go back and down just like this. So what you're doing is you're just taking whatever is in there, in that position, and you're just turning it a little bit and moving it. So allowing it to just kind of change its shape a little bit through where the where it's trapped. And then from here, let's say you've got it through. Now you can push, turn it through all the way just like that. Now we're through this, the S trap of the toilet. So with this snake, you can go another three feet longer. So from there, there's a little spot here that you can push just right there. 
So what you do is you push it in. Sometimes it's a little tricky. You can push it in just like that and then you gotta lift this, this part of the snake all the way up and then it'll click back into the bottom here. So now you've got from here to here another three feet of snake that you can push past the toilet. Now to do that portion, it's the exact same. You just wanna push your snake in, rotate. You might find that it does get a little tricky from this spot. And you could also use this to turn if it's, this is way, handled way up high and it's a little awkward. So now we're in the drain. We're not in the toilet anymore, this, the head of the snake. And when you're doing this drain cleaning, don't rush it, don't just jam it in there. Turn it, allow it to clean the outside of the pipe. Give it a nice few turns on the back. And now from here, if you're pulling it out and it gets stuck, give it a little turn, pull, give it another little turn, pull, turn it, pull it. The S-traps on these toilets aren't very big, so the snake has to do a decent amount of work to come out. So from here, to click it back to the other position, you can take this little button here, push it. Sometimes this button is a little tough to, to get in. So now the button's pushed in. And then what you can do now is just slide this down. The toilet's stopping it, the snake from going forward because it doesn't have very much restriction. Now we're back in the original position. Okay, so now, now this part here usually is a little tough, but as long as you're turning the snake and coming out at the same time, usually you shouldn't have a problem. And now from here what I do is this is the part where I like to keep it back here at an angle. So I'll take it from here and I'll just pull it straight back just like this and straight up. And now from here, we'll have a little bit of water in there. So you can just turn it over. And then, so what I'll do is I won't put this snake back in the original position that it is. I'll go outside and do that. So inside the house, I'll just put this bucket inside of here like this and inside of here like this. Because if I take that out now, I'm gonna get dirty water spraying everywhere. So I could take this outside disinfect it, clean it, whatever I need to do. Um, but from here, at least all the mess is nice and contained right inside of the bucket. Thanks for watching. If you wanna go deeper with us, check us out on theplumbinggurus.com. Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you on the next one.